Hello everyone and welcome back to another True Crime Mysteries video. Thank you all for being here. Today we're discussing the recent arrest of a Detroit lawyer accused of murder and also the attempted theft of the victim's estate via a fraudulent will. Let's get into it. It was on June 1st, 2022 in Oak Park, Detroit, Michigan, when Dan Hutchinson was seen leaving his business on his way to see his lawyer, Marco Bisbeekis. Dan, 47 years old, was nicknamed Hutch. He was the owner of Hutch's jewelry and was well-known jewelry with a celebrity client list. Considered one of the best places to go for unique and standout pieces. Celebrities were known to get a one-of-a-kind piece made. Hutchinson's jewelry store was also a must-stop destination for visiting celebrities. While pulling out of the parking lot, a man pulled up to his GMC Denali on a bike and started shooting into the vehicle, then fled the scene. Dan's wife, Marissa, was in the car's passenger seat at the time and was uninjured, but Dan had sustained life-threatening injuries. First responders arrived and performed CPR on Dan. He was then rushed to the hospital, where he eventually succumbed to his injuries. There have been at least 10 bullet holes in the window of the SUV. A prominent jeweler shot after leaving work. We thank you for joining us for 7 Action News at 6. I'm Carolyn Clifford. And I'm Dave Llewellyn. Daniel Hutchinson was the owner of Hutch's Jewelry and known for his high-profile clients. Hutchinson died when bullets were peppered into his car yesterday in Oak Park. New at 6. As 7 Action News reporter Simon Sheikh had learned, Hutchinson was not the only person in the car. Police say victim Daniel Hutchinson was a husband and father, a well-known jeweler who often did work for celebrities. At this point, they don't know why someone would target him. On social media, the artwork of Daniel Hutchinson, also known as Hutch the Jeweler, draws a massive following of more than 300,000. Sadly, many are adding to an outpour of emotions today after he was gunned down, leaving work on Wednesday. Two days later, on June 3rd, it was announced that the Metro North Michigan State Police had arrested and charged the shooter responsible for Dan's murder. The shooter had actually been located and arrested on the day of the shooting. 44-year-old Roy Larry was charged with first-degree murder and felony firearm possession. Following the announcement that the charges had been laid, law enforcement stated that they believed Larry had been a lone suspect. It had been a targeted attack and that the threat to the community had been eliminated. Larry pleaded guilty and it was announced that he would be held in custody while he awaited trial. However, what had initially appeared to be an open and shut case would take a turn. Roy Larry's arrest was not the end. Certain things in the case weren't adding up. Dan's murder and Marissa's attempted murder didn't necessarily make sense, and Roy Larry's involvement would turn out to only be the tip of the iceberg in what would ultimately turn into a bizarre murder-for-hire plot. The big question everyone was asking was why? What was the motive? Nothing was stolen, and Larry had said nothing before or after attacking. The Hutchinsons were well-liked and had good standing with the community, and it just didn't make any sense why they would be targeted this way. Police discovered that there were at least two more people involved in the shooting, and on August 30th, 2022, Angelo Raptopoulos, 32 years old, was arraigned for conspiracy to commit murder. Raptopoulos was arrested while at the airport. It is unknown where he was trying to go, but it is now guessed he was trying to flee town and was denied bond at this time. On September 2nd, a third suspect, 57-year-old Darnell Larry, would be arraigned. Darnell was a relative to Roy Larry. Both Darnell and Raptopoulos had been found in contact with Roy Larry about the shooting. All three men were being held without bond. Police continued to investigate, but they did not have answers as to why these men had been murdered and what their connection was. After months of continued investigation, police had a fourth and final suspect. On Thursday, November 3rd, an attorney named Marco Bisbeke was arrested on one count of felony firearm possession, first-degree murder, and conspiracy to commit first-degree murder. 
Ms. Beaky was Dan's lawyer and the same person he'd been set to meet the day he was murdered. Ms. Beaky was found to be in contact with one of the other suspects, Raptopolis. Ms. Beaky is now being accused of being the mastermind behind the targeted murder of Dan and Marissa. When law enforcement determined Ms. Beaky's connection, the questions of motive began to fall into place. Dan was using Bisbeaky's legal services, and one of the first things Bisbeaky handled was Dan and Marissa's wills. After Dan's death, it was revealed that Marco Bisbeaky, the lawyer who drafted Dan's will, had actually written himself into the will and stood to inherit a large sum of money if both Dan and Marissa died. It was revealed that the will had been amended to include Bisbeaky's, and Dan had never known that his lawyer had been set to inherit a majority of his estate. Bisbeaky specialized in personal injury cases, so it is unclear why he'd been handling Dan's will to start with. The firm Bisbeaky's worked at, All Law PLLC, appears to have closed its doors. His website is not available, and the other attorneys appear to have moved on to other firms. That information shed some light onto why Dan was killed. Police now had a motive. Money making the police look closer at Bisbeaky's. This case may not have been the only case that Bisbeaky had used his authority as a lawyer to pull a fast one over his clients. There was a civil case from 2020 that showed that Bisbeaky may have defrauded an elderly client into deeding over several properties to Bisbeaky's. The properties were worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. These properties were successfully deeded over to Bisbeaky, and shortly after the will was drafted, the man died. An autopsy stated that he died of natural causes, however, the family of the man called the validity of the results into question. The civil case had been settled between the family and Bisbeaky's, and at this time it is unclear if any criminal investigation in this case will go forward. Now in this case, Authorities have not released many details on the investigation pending an ongoing trial, but they have said that there is an extensive evidence that Bisbeaky was involved in the murder and attempted murder. It is believed that he had met with the other three suspects to discuss payment, as well as how the couple should be killed, where they would be, and where they were supposed to be going. It is believed that Bisbeaky was at the head of this plot, with Raptopolis below him and Roy and Darnell Larry at the bottom. In November, three of the four men were at a bail hearing. Marco Bisbeaky, Roy Larry, and Angelo Raptopolis were present. During this hearing, the prosecutor said Darnell Larry had been cooperating with authorities to corroborate the evidence. During this hearing, the prosecutor said that they believed Mrs. Hutchinson's and Darnell Larry would be in danger if Bisbeaky was given bail. Bisbeaky apparently called Darnell to tell him where the couple was, what car to look for, and how he wanted them both dead. Authorities later said that they discovered that after the murder, Darnell Larry, Bisbeaky, and Raptopolis all got together at Bisbeaky's office to discuss cutting ties and deleting evidence. Law enforcement were able to use cell phone locations to confirm they were all in the same place after the murder. The judge has removed Roy Larry and Raptopolis' first attorneys who were hired by Bisbeaky. In an order of withdrawal, both attorneys may be called as witnesses because of their closeness to Bisbeaky, but that has not been confirmed. Bisbeaky's first lawyer was also removed and will likely be called on to provide testimony during the trial. Currently, all four men are being held without bail and have been charged with first-degree murder and conspiracy to commit murder. This court case is still ongoing, and there is no information on a future court date at this time. If you want me to follow the trial of this case, please let me know in the comment section. May there be swift justice for Dan. Hundreds of people gathered to mourn the beloved jeweler, and thousands shared sentiments online. A senseless murder perpetrated by greed. Well, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for sticking around to the end. As always, if you want to support the channel, the easiest way is to hit the like button. You can also subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss my next upload. Other ways to support the channel are by joining my Patreon or channel membership. I also have merch if you want to find all the links to that in the description box, plus a few extras. Please don't forget to follow me on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter for more. But with that being said, thank you so much for being here and supporting what I do. It is very much appreciated. That is it for me. I will see you all in the next one. Bye for now.